to potential enemies, ready to respond with unwavering force. This mega sub is in a class of its own. The all-new Virginia class. This is an amazing ship. Name the USS Virginia as the first of a new class. This amazing sub has staggering capabilities. It's the most advanced and versatile submarine in the world. I mean, we consider this like the Ferrari of the subclass. Its crew are some of the best trained submariners in the US Navy. We picked up Master 2. And they have to be. Because this is the most complex submarine ever built. It's one heck of a weapon. It can launch attacks on other vessels using devastating torpedoes and can deliver cruise missiles 1,600 kilometers inland with pinpoint accuracy. To escape potential enemies, the USS Virginia can dive to depths of up to 240 meters. But what elevates this new supreme sub to a class by itself is its astonishing spying ability. This sub has been called the ultimate eavesdropper, and for good reason. The Virginia has the most sophisticated sensors ever fitted on an American submarine. It can see and hear better than any US sub ever built. But even with such technology, the Virginia must get in close to potential enemies. And she does. Extremely close. She uses a revolutionary automatic navigation system, which allows the Virginia to inch itself through shallow waters to an exact coordinate. The question for a Virginia is, is how slow can you go? How well can you take that 8,000 ton submarine and control it in coastal waters a couple feet off the bottom? Can you move that ship inch by inch? Like a stealth fighter, it has the ability to remain undetected. But unlike the stealth, the Virginia can stay motionless underwater for up to three months if needed. And we could be sitting there for days and weeks and years and you'd never know we were there. This is a sub like no other. With such covert potential, the Virginia's intelligence gathering is second to none. It can also deploy elite forces like Navy SEALs at a moment's notice. Such adaptability makes this sub one of a kind. And the USS Virginia is one heavy sea creature. At 7,100 tons, it weighs as much as 1,600 killer whales. This monster sub is 115 meters from stern to bow. If you were to lay the Statue of Liberty down next to it, the Virginia would still outstretch it by 22 meters. But how does such a beast move so effortlessly underwater? The dynamic thrust of this megastructure is a nuclear reactor. The design and operation of the reactor is top secret. But what we do know is that it's an astonishing powerhouse. A compact nuclear reactor converts seawater to steam. The supercharged steam then spins the massive turbines, which in turn propel the sub. The reactor also powers all electrical needs for this high-tech super sub. And what's more, the nuclear reactor on the Virginia has a 30-year lifespan. Translation, it can go that long without ever needing to be refueled. That's twice the average lifespan of nuclear reactors on other US attack submarines. Today, the USS Virginia is an amazing success story. But a decade earlier, its future and that of the entire United States Submarine Corps was looking bleak. There are two main types of subs in the US Navy fleet. The first are deep ocean ballistic submarines. These have a single strategic mission to carry nuclear missiles, which can be launched at targets anywhere in the world. The other type is the attack submarine. These are designed to move fast, sink vessels, launch cruise missiles, and gather intelligence. Before Virginia, the state-of-the-art in attack submarine design was the Seawolf class. 
The cost to design and build the first Seawolf submarine was over 5 billion US dollars. It was developed during the Cold War for potential deep ocean battles against the mighty Soviet Navy. But in the early 90s, the political climate dramatically changes. Almost overnight, the Soviet Union collapses. America's arch enemy has simply disappeared. The costly arms race between the superpowers is no longer relevant. In this brave new world, it's inevitable that defense budgets are slashed. Every division of the military is a target for cuts. Submarines like the Seawolf class are simply no longer needed. But as the 1990s develop, new enemies of the United States and her allies emerge. Small terrorist groups in tyrannical countries like Iraq and Somalia cause the military to rethink spending. If you look at the threats we're dealing with today, a lot of the threats are coming from third world countries, small countries um, where we need to uh, take the battle, if you will, to them and prepare a battle space around their coastlines. What is the point of a huge navy if these terrorist armies have no sea power? Why does the US Navy need a submarine at all? Good question. And one that was being discussed at the highest levels in the early 90s. In today's complex world, the military needs to be ever more informed of enemy activity. But US defense already has sophisticated spy planes and satellites. They can see every detail from several kilometers high. They also have better ground reconnaissance and a superior spy system. So what can a submarine offer? In fact, submarines have a lot to offer. The Navy is aware that if they can harness new but unproven technologies, the submarine could remain in shallow waters completely undetected. And what's more, the super spy could stay there for weeks, even months. If a new mega sub can listen and stay close to enemy lines, it can still be an important military asset. In 1995, the US House and Senate finally agreed on the Navy's plan for a new class of attack submarine. But the Navy has set strict guidelines for the submarine designers. The new class of sub must have awesome spy capabilities. She must negotiate shallow waters with pinpoint accuracy. There, she must remain motionless for days on end, regardless of currents and sea drag. She must be able to deploy high-tech weapons to rain on an enemy whenever needed. And she must also be able to dispatch elite special forces like Navy SEALs. The new super sub must have stealth-like maneuverability and be able to disappear underwater for up to three months at a time. It's a tall order by any standards, but there's a catch. They have one year less than it took to build the first Seawolf. And incredibly, there's an even bigger catch. It has to be made for 20% less money. With such constraints, there were many in the submarine industry who thought it was simply impossible. I think the reaction is always uh, one of, of uh, you know, how can we do that? We've never done it before. If the Navy can make this work, it'll provide a major new weapon in the US arsenal. But if they fail, all US subs could be in question. It's 1996. The US government needs to get up close and personal with new terrorist enemies. The Navy insists that submarines can still help in this thorny urban war. They claim they can build a new class of submarine. Bigger, better, quieter and more deadly. But there's a catch, a big one. It must be built in less time and for a great deal less money than the previous attack submarine, the Seawolf class. With such limitations, this project looks more likely to sink than float. The Navy decides to offer the Mammoth Design Challenge to a trusted company, Electric Boat. Based in Groton, Connecticut, this company has enjoyed bragging rights that span over a century of ship and submarine building for the US Navy. The first sub they built was the USS Holland for the Navy in 1900. The USS Holland revolutionized the US Navy. It marks the beginning of more than a century of military submarine building. Electric boats' expertise is second to none, but some government officials already fear that this massive challenge may simply be impossible. 
Despite the huge red flag, Electric Boat finally agrees to design and develop the new Virginia class. But to bring it in more cheaply than the Seawolf, they'll have to completely change the way submarines are built. It starts with paper and wood. In the past, they would have drawn up initial plans on paper. Previous classes of submarines were designed uh, historically like probably any other large construction project with two-dimensional drawings, blueprints. But the problem with two-dimensional plans is that the different designers can't always view each other's layouts. If two engineers from different departments end up competing for the same space, it could lead to lengthy and costly delays. On this tight schedule and budget, there's no room for such error. It'll put the project behind schedule even before it started. It could tip the balance and mean the end of the new super sub. The team needs another solution. They turn to new computer-aided technology. The benefit being that the whole model can be seen in three dimensions. This will mean that each department can quickly see what the other is doing. If it works, it'll save the company a fortune and help design a more efficient sub. But if it doesn't work, it could mean the new super sub is doomed from the start. The president of Electric Boat finally decides to take the risk. He came in and finally took all the drafting boards out of the plant and said, OK, go for it on your computers. Before the Virginia class, when a submarine was designed on paper, builders would then construct a life-sized wood mock-up of the plans just to make sure everything fit. But with the computer-aided design of the Virginia, that step could be skipped. All of the test fitting could be done right there on the screen. It is the first time that a U.S. Navy submarine is completely designed via computer. And the program that would make this computer-aided design possible is already proven technology. Known as the CATIA program, it has effectively been used in the development of airplanes by the Boeing Corporation. Electric Boat figures there are enough similarities between a plane's fuselage and a submarine to take the plunge. It proves to be the right decision. All the various designers have access to the computer 3D model. This allows engineers to work in the same virtual space at the same time. Designers can now view all the plans to make sure they don't interfere with other layouts. The piping designer is running his pipes and I'm running my cables. We can go in and detect interferences day by day. Every part of the ship is scrutinized for function and economy. So creating the sub on a computer seems to allow for the more efficient test fitting of systems and parts. But the next challenge facing designers is figuring out how to create spaces for people. Workers need room to do installations and sailors need space to do their jobs. So in order to ensure those spaces are adequate, designers welcome the help of this guy. Meet Ergo Man. Ergo Man is a computer-generated image of a human being that comes in three virtual sizes. 1.7 meters, 1.8 meters, and 1.9 meters. Whatever movements a human can do, Ergo Man can replicate. Then when the ergonomically correct envelope has been pushed and movement is made that is not humanly possible, Ergo Man clearly lets engineers know by simply turning that body part red, enabling the designer to adjust the space he's working on. This revolutionary technology could save the company millions in costly redesign. It could also guarantee that the crew will operate at maximum efficiency. The computer-aided design also helps in one other crucial way. The future of warfare is uncertain. To meet that uncertainty, this incredible sub must be able to adapt to new situations. As modern warfare changes, so the Virginia must adapt to meet it head on. <laughs> 